In a quiet Florida neighborhood, a case emerged that would shock the community and ignite a complex debate on juvenile justice. A 13-year-old boy, Derek Rosa, stands accused of a crime that is as tragic as it is incomprehensible, the fatal stabbing of his own mother, Irina Garcia, as she slept beside her newborn daughter. On the fateful morning of October 12, the stillness of the night was shattered by a chilling 911 call. Derek Rosa dialed the emergency services to confess to the slaying of his 39-year-old mother. When the authorities arrived, they were met with a harrowing scene. Garcia lay lifeless next to the crib of her 14-day-old baby. Her life cut short by the hands of her son. The family, reeling from the unimaginable turn of events, has since made a heartfelt plea for leniency. They are grappling with a dual tragedy, the loss of Garcia and the potential loss of Derek to a system that may try him as an adult, stripping him of his youth and future in one swift motion. The story opens a window into the most profound aspects of human nature and the law. It raises poignant questions about accountability, the capacity for rehabilitation, and the appropriate response of the justice system to juvenile offenders. As the case unfolds, it continues to captivate and horrify those who hear of it, leaving a community and a family searching for answers and peace. The tragic story that unfolded in Hialeah, Florida, centers around the Garcia family, which was seen by many as a typical suburban household. Irina Garcia, a 39-year-old mother, was the heart of this family, known for her caring nature and dedication to her children. She had recently given birth to her second child, a daughter, just two weeks before the incident, bringing a new wave of joy into their lives. Irina's life was one of commitment to her family and her role as a mother. The family's life in Hialeah was appended in the most horrific way imaginable, turning what should have been a time of celebration into a period of mourning and disbelief. The eldest son, Derek Rosa, who is now at the center of this harrowing case, was known as an honor student. Pictures surfaced of a happier time when Derek was seen cradling his pregnant mother's belly, a poignant reminder of the bond they once shared. This image stands in stark contrast to the allegations he now faces. The family's apartment on West 79th Street, which was once filled with the sounds of a newborn and the warmth of a close-knit family, became a crime scene that fateful day. The father, returning home, was met with an unexpected horror that would forever change the course of their lives. The Garcias were a family that, from the outside, seemed to embody the hopes and dreams of many American households. However, the layers of their private life, the struggles they may have faced, and the dynamics between family members are now being pieced together in the aftermath of the tragedy. As the community grapples with the shock of the event, those who knew the Garcias are left to reconcile the image of a family that once was with the grim reality they now face. The investigation into the case continues to unravel the threads of a tapestry that was once the Garcia family, seeking to understand how such a promising young life could take such a dark turn. The incident that has captured the attention of Hialeah, Florida, and the nation involves a 13-year-old boy named Derek Rosa. On October 12, in a quiet apartment on West 79th Street, a gruesome and heartbreaking scene unfolded. Derek is accused of fatally stabbing his mother, Irina Garcia, while she slept beside her 14-day-old baby girl. Here are the details that have been reported. The crime, in the early hours, Derek allegedly attacked his mother with a knife, inflicting multiple stab wounds. The attack was not only brutal but also carried out with a chilling calmness, as reported by authorities. The 911 call. After the stabbing, Derek made a 911 call to confess to the crime. The audio of this call, which has not been released to the public, captured the confession of a young boy in a situation almost too disturbing to comprehend. The arrest. When the police arrived, they found Arena Garcia deceased, with her newborn daughter unharmed but in close proximity to the violence. Derek was taken into custody without incident. The charges, initially handled as a juvenile case, the gravity of the crime led to Derek being charged as an adult with first degree murder. This decision has been met with mixed reactions, considering his age. The plea, Derek's legal representation entered a plea of not guilty on his behalf. This plea comes amidst a backdrop of his family's pleas for leniency and a second chance for the boy they describe as a good boy who should not face adult charges. The community's shock, the community has been left reeling, trying to reconcile the image of a young honors student with the heinous act he is accused of committing. Neighbors and friends have expressed disbelief and shock, as nothing in Derek's behavior seemed to indicate a capacity for such violence. The aftermath of the tragic incident in Hialeah, Florida, was a period of intense shock and grief for the community and the Garcia family. Here are the details that have been reported regarding the aftermath and the arrest of Derek Rosa. The immediate aftermath, after the stabbing, Derek Rosa called 911 to report the murder of his mother, Irina Garcia. The police released audio of the 911 call, where Derek is heard speaking with a police dispatcher shortly after the killing. 
In the call, he reportedly said, she's dead, miss, indicating the finality of the act he had just committed. Discovery of the scene Authorities arrived at the apartment on West 79th Street after the 911 call, where they found Garcia lying dead next to a crib where the newborn baby was sleeping. The scene was a harrowing juxtaposition of life and death, with the infant unharmed but her mother's life violently taken. Derek Rose's arrest Derek was taken into custody without incident. Despite his young age, the severity of the crime led to him being charged as an adult with first-degree murder. This decision has sparked a conversation about juvenile justice and the appropriate handling of such serious cases involving minors. Family's reaction The family, reeling from the loss of Irina and the arrest of Derek, pleaded for leniency and a second chance for the boy. They have been described as being in a state of disbelief, struggling to comprehend the events that have unfolded. Community response The community has been left to grapple with the tragedy, with neighbors and friends expressing their shock and disbelief. The incident has prompted a broader discussion on mental health, juvenile crime, and the support systems available for families in crisis. Legal proceedings Derek Rosa was arraigned and pleaded not guilty to the charges. The case has attracted significant media attention and the legal proceedings are being followed closely by the public. The legal process for Derek Rosa, the 13-year-old charged with the first-degree murder of his mother, Irina Garcia, has been a focal point of public attention and legal scrutiny. Here are the key points of the legal proceedings. Charges and indictment Derek Rosa was indicted on a first-degree murder charge. This indictment automatically advanced his case into the adult felony court system in Florida, a move that has been met with controversy due to his age. Juvenile or Adult Court The decision to try Derek as an adult has sparked a debate on the complexities of juvenile crime and the societal implications of such legal action. The gravity of the crime juxtaposed with Derek's age presents a challenging scenario for the justice system. Family's Plea for Leniency Derek's family, particularly his father, has been vocal in seeking leniency for him. They have pleaded for a second chance, emphasizing his previous status as an honor student and the potential impact of adult charges on his future. Court hearings During the court hearings, the prosecution and defense have presented their arguments regarding the handling of Derek's case. The prosecution has pointed to the severity of the crime, while the defense has highlighted his age and the need for rehabilitative justice. Legal representation Derek has been provided with legal representation that has entered a plea of not guilty on his behalf. The defense team may also bring in experts to discuss Derek's psychological state and any factors that could have contributed to the incident. Public and media attention The case has garnered significant media coverage, with the public taking a keen interest in the proceeding. The balance between justice for the crime and the appropriate treatment of a juvenile offender remains a contentious topic. In the wake of the tragic event where Derek Rosa, a 13-year-old boy, was charged with the murder of his mother, Irina Garcia, the family's plea for leniency has become a poignant aspect of the case. Here are the details that have been reported regarding the family's response. Family's defense of Derek Relatives have come forward to defend Derek, describing him as a good boy and a sweetheart, which starkly contrasts with the crime he is accused of. They have been advocating for understanding and compassion, emphasizing his character and the need for a second chance. Father's plea Derek's father has been particularly vocal, pleading with the court for leniency. He has highlighted Derek's history as an honors student and the potential for rehabilitation, suggesting that the adult criminal system is not the right place for his son. Legal motions The family's attorney has filed motions to try and convince the judge to move Derek back to juvenile detention, arguing that the adult prison system is no place for a child and that Derek's mental and emotional needs would be better served in a juvenile facility. Public sympathy The family's pleas have resonated with parts of the public, sparking discussions on social media and among community members about the nature of juvenile justice and the capacity for change in young offenders. The argument for rehabilitation Advocates for Derek have been making the case that a child, especially one with no prior history of violence, should be given the opportunity for rehabilitation rather than being subjected to the harsh realities of the adult penal system. The community's reaction to the tragic case of Derek Rosa, the 13-year-old charged with the murder of his mother, Irina Garcia, has been one of shock, sorrow, and complex emotions. Here's a breakdown of the community response. Shock and disbelief. The community has expressed profound shock at the news of the crime, especially given Derek's age and the fact that he was known as an honor roll student. Neighbors and local residents have been trying to reconcile the image of a young, seemingly well-behaved boy with the gravity of the crime he is accused of. Grief for the victim. There is a deep sense of grief for Irina Garcia, the victim, who was a mother of two. Community vigils and memorials have been reported, where residents have gathered to honor her memory and support the family left behind. 
concern for the newborn. The presence of the newborn baby, who was in the same room during the incident, has added to the community's distress. There is concern for the well-being and future of the infant, who has lost her mother in such tragic circumstances. Debate over juvenile justice. The case has sparked a community-wide discussion on the juvenile justice system. Many are questioning whether a 13-year-old should be tried as an adult and are calling for a more rehabilitative approach. Support for the family. While grappling with the incident, there has been an outpouring of support for Derek's family. Community members have shown sympathy for the family's plea for leniency and the difficult position they are in. Media coverage. The case has attracted significant media attention, with local news outlets covering each development extensively. This has contributed to the widespread community reaction and the formation of public opinion on the case. Social media engaged the case of Derek Rosa. The 13-year-old charged with the murder of his mother has raised significant questions and concerns about juvenile justice. Here's a summary of the considerations being discussed. Severity of the crime versus age of the offender. The case has highlighted the tension between the severity of the crime and the young age of the offender. There's a debate on whether the punitive adult justice system or the more rehabilitative juvenile system is appropriate for someone like Derek. Supreme Court rulings The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against the death penalty for juveniles, but in Derek's case, he potentially faces life in prison if convicted. This has brought up discussions about the constitutionality and morality of sentencing juveniles to life terms. Rehabilitation possibilities There's a focus on the potential for rehabilitation for young offenders like Derek. Experts argue that the juvenile justice system, with its emphasis on rehabilitation and education, may be more suited to address the needs of young individuals who commit serious crimes. Impact of adult charges Charging Derek as an adult has significant implications for his future. Advocates for juvenile justice reform argue that such charges can lead to a lifetime of consequences and hinder the individual's chances of reintegration into society. Family and Community Involvement The role of the family and the community in the juvenile justice process is being examined. There's a call for a system that not only punishes but also works with the community to prevent such tragedies and to support the offender's growth and development. Mental Health Considerations The case has brought attention to the mental health aspects of juvenile crime. There's a discussion about the need for comprehensive mental health evaluations and interventions as part of the juvenile justice process. The case of Derek Rosa has drawn commentary from various experts in the fields of law, psychology, and juvenile justice. Here's a summary of expert opinions on the case. Legal experts. Legal professionals have been discussing the complexities of trying a 13-year-old as an adult. Some argue that the juvenile system, with its focus on rehabilitation, would be more appropriate for Derek, considering his age and psychological development. Psychologists Child psychologists have weighed in on the potential impact of family dynamics and adolescent brain development on Derek's actions. They emphasize that the teenage brain is still developing, particularly in areas that govern impulse control and decision-making. Juvenile Justice Advocates Advocates for juvenile justice reform have used the case to highlight the need for a system that can differentiate between the rehabilitative needs of adolescents and the punitive measures of the adult criminal system. Criminologists Experts in criminology have pointed out that cases like Derek's are rare but raise important questions about early intervention and the signs that might indicate a young person is at risk of committing violent acts. Forensic Experts Forensics The current status of the case involving Derek Rosa the 13-year-old from Hialeah, Florida, accused of fatally stabbing his mother, is as follows. Charges Derek Rosa has been charged with first-degree murder. A grand jury indicted the teen, which means he will be tried as an adult under Florida law. Legal proceedings The case is currently in the pre-trial phase. Derek has been cooperative with the authorities, and his legal representation may be working on a defense that could involve his mental state and family circumstances. Public and legal scrutiny. The case is under intense scrutiny, both from the public and within the legal system, due to the nature of the crime and Derek's age. Custody. Following the incident, Derek has been held in custody. There is a possibility that his attorneys might request for him to be moved to juvenile detention, considering his age. Next steps. The next steps in the legal process will likely involve a series of hearings to determine the admissibility of evidence, pretrial motions, and potentially discussions around plea deals or alternative sentencing options. The tragedy of Derek Rose's case opens a window into the complex family dynamics that can sometimes precede such heartbreaking events. It prompts a deeper reflection on the hidden struggles within a household that may go unnoticed by the outside world. The incident has left the community and the family grappling with questions about what could have been done differently and how such a young individual could have been driven to commit such an act. This section of the video would explore the role of family relationships 
the impact of domestic environments on young minds, and the importance of vigilance and support for families going through difficult times. As we reach the end of this harrowing tale, it's crucial to step back and absorb the gravity of what has transpired. The case of Derek Rosa is not just a story of a crime. It's a narrative that intertwines the fragility of the human condition, the complexities of the juvenile justice system, and the profound impact of family dynamics. We've delved into the layers of a family's private life thrust into the public eye by a tragedy. It's a stark reminder of the unseen battles that many face and the potential consequences when those battles are lost. This case challenges us to look beyond the surface and consider the underlying issues that can lead to such devastating outcomes. It also calls into question our role as a society in supporting families and children before they reach a breaking point. How can we, as a community, foster an environment that not only recognizes but also addresses the signs of distress among its youngest members. The legal journey of Derek Rosa raises poignant questions about the purpose of our justice system. Is it retribution, rehabilitation, or a balance of both? How does society reconcile a child's act with our collective conscience and our legal frameworks? This case underscores the importance of mental health awareness and resources for young people. It's a call to arms for better access to mental health care and for destigmatizing the conversation around psychological well-being. As viewers, you're not just passive consumers of this story, you have the power to affect change. Engage with local and online communities to advocate for mental health resources. Support organizations that work with troubled youth. Participate in dialogues about reforming the juvenile justice system to focus on rehabilitation. Let's honor the memory of those lost by working towards a future where such tragedies are less likely to occur. Share this video to spread awareness, and if you're moved by Derek's story, consider reaching out to your representatives or donating to charities that support juvenile mental health. I invite you to leave your thoughts in the comments below. How do you think we can prevent such tragedies? What support can we offer to those who are struggling? Your voice matters. If you're passionate about staying informed and making a difference, please subscribe to the channel. Together, we can build a community that's not only aware but also active in the pursuit of justice and well-being for all. This isn't just a conclusion, it's a new beginning for a conversation that needs to be had. Thank you for watching, for reflecting, and for taking a step towards making a difference.